Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. In this video, we'll make our game run outside our Eclipse workspace. Just like any other game, we will be able to run it from a file on our desktop. So stick around to see how to do it. If you haven't followed along this tutorial, you can skip the first part where I go over some changes to the code to make it work. Otherwise, follow along as I explain it. I will not code in this episode, I will just talk about the changes and also show you the changes. Feel free to pause it at any time, so you can code it on your side. So, what's going to happen in this episode? Well, we will take our tower defense project and export it so it can be run outside Eclipse. That way we can play the game on any computer, as long as that computer have Java installed. So, how will we be doing it? We will make something called a runnable jar. It's the Java equivalent to an exe file on Windows. And the runnable jar contains all the code and resources needed to start a program, or in this case, our game. But that's not completely 100% true, since we will change the place where we store our level file, and I will get to that in a second. Creating a runnable jar is about 3-4 clicks and then you're done. However, to make it run is a completely different story, and we need to take a few things into account. That is something I will try to explain as well as I can, and hopefully, by the end of this episode, you can now run your game outside Eclipse. If our game had no images or any files it needed to access, except the Java files of course, where all the code is, then it would be easy. But our game have two types of files it accesses, except the Java files, and that is one image file for sprites and animations, and of course the level file where we store all the level data. It's the text file, in this case, we need to change how and where we store it, compared to our current way of doing it. Because as of now, we can start our game and play it without any issues, the read and write works perfect. However, if we were to create our runnable jar now and try it, we would get a lot of errors. Path not found type of errors. Reading a file inside a runnable jar is no problem. Writing to it or creating a new one is a problem. Why this is, I cannot give you a good answer to. It has to do with rules in the operating system itself, as I understand, that does not allow it, or just make it very difficult to do so. And instead of trying to force our way to do it, we will just make a folder inside our home directory, and then create a level file there. And that will allow us to read and write to it. And the way we're going to do it will allow us to run the game in both Linux and Windows. It should work on Mac as well, but as I do not have a Mac computer to test on, I cannot promise you that it will work there, but it should. So let's head over to our Eclipse and do some changes to our code. Usually I would code and speak at the same time, but I have changed the code before recording. So I will talk about the changes since this is not really a coding episode. This is more about how to make a runnable jar. So I will just explain the changes and you can pause the video at any time. Do you want to do the changes on your side? Our first changes in the code is inside the load save class. As you can see, I made a couple of static variables at the top. Four strings and one file. And the first string has something called system.getProperty and then we pass in a string called user.home. This one returns the path to the user's home directory, regardless of the operating system you have. So when I'm using Linux, it gives me one path, and when I'm using Windows, it gives me another. And this is great, because it allows us to make one call that can be used on different systems without us having to make different projects or code blocks for each system. And the second string is simply the name of the folder that will be created. And the third, the name of the text file or level file. And it's also a new name compared to the one we've been using previously. And the last string puts them all together. There's something called file.separator between each string. And that is also to make sure that the path will work on the Windows system and also a Unix system, such as Linux or Mac. Windows actually uses slash in one direction and a Unix system the other one. And this file.separator returns the correct one for the system you run it on. Just like the first string we made. And if we didn't take this into account, then we would have errors if we try to run it on a different system, obviously. Because the path is obviously wrong. And the file we got there is simply to make a global file variable. So if we need to change anything in the path, we just do it in this one place and we will not need to change it anywhere else. So when our methods need to save or read from the file, we just put that global level file variable 
in it and it will work great. This will of course limit our game to just one level, but we only got one level and we have no code to handle any level change. So one level it is. And it's worth noting that in all the methods we have, especially in load and save, I removed all the file arguments since we have now a global file variable and we will use that one instead. So no more creating a file variable in each method that use the same file. Then I made a method called create folder and it do just that. In case it does not exist when you run the game, it creates it for us. If it does exist, it just ignores the command. And that's the folder where we're gonna store our level file in. And this method is called from the game class in the constructor before anything else. If the folder does not exist and we're then trying to create a level file, that would cause an error. So folder must be made first. And in our game class, the constructor, we create our default level just like before. But we won't need to specify the name of the file since it's inside our load save class already. If the file exists already, we don't create a new one. I also noted that in the same class, we initialize all our classes before creating the default level, which is wrong and would result in a lot of errors. So we need to initialize our classes after the level file have been made as well as the folder it sits in. If you remove the file arguments from all the methods in the load save class, you would end up with a few errors in the playing and edit classes. That's because they are still passing in the level file name. So just head over to those classes and remove that part. I think that is all the changes I made, but if there's anything that's not shown here, just download the episode from my website and compare it if you get stuck. So I think it's time for us to make our export. So right click on our project, export, go down in the Java folder, click runnable jar file, next. In the launch configuration, select the one that has the same name as your main method and uh, wherever you wanna store it. So for example, I'm storing it on my desktop. Otherwise you can pick wherever you want it, but I'm storing it on the desktop. And also a name for it. I'm just gonna call it tdgame.jar. And make sure the extract required libraries into the generated jar is selected and finish. If you have one of these warnings, jar export finished with warning. See details, additional information. What this means is that there is some sort of warning in the code. And those warnings, or at least all of these warnings, are referring to variables or methods that are not being used or even imports. So we're gonna take a look in our game screen and game class to see what type of warnings we have. But uh, we can just press OK. So before we go to the file, let's just take a quick look at our game screen, which has one warning. We haven't set a serial version ID. Not gonna get into that, doesn't really matter. And in our game class, we have some imports, or I have at least, some imports that's not being used. And then if we were to try it again, or make the jar again, when we have solved all of these yellow warnings, then there would be no warnings, but we can ignore that. So let's go to our runnable jar. And on my desktop, I have now a file called tdgame.jar. And I'm gonna show how to do it on Win Windows 2, but first on Linux. So if you wanna run this on Linux, double clicking it might not work. You might get some weird errors. This file, blah, 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 etc. But right click it, properties, permissions, allow executing file as a program. And then we wanna make sure that when we open the program, we're using the open JDK Java runtime. If we were to just set that one, let's say set this default and close, then we would open it as an archive, which is not correct. So we need to make sure when we open it, we're using the open JDK Java runtime, set it default, close. So if we run our game right now, double click it, we can see that the level does not correspond with the one we used in Eclipse. That's because we create a completely new level. So this is all the default level data. And of course, the start and end in the top left corner, of course. So you get to make the level again, or you can copy whatever data you have in the new level into the new file. And we're gonna take a look at the new file and folder as well. So the runnable jar is now in our desktop. And if we go to our home directory, 
should have one in Windows as well. We have now a folder called TD Tutorial. And inside that, we have the level. And if we were to delete that one and start our game again, then we're gonna create the folder again inside our home directory. So double clicking game. And now it's back. So that's how it works. So let's do it in Windows as well. Using the same project, the same code, there's no difference. First, running the game from Eclipse. It's starting off as it should. And same here, the level is not the same as we'd used before, cause it created a completely new level file. But it works, which is great. And here you can see the reason why we don't wanna specify a path hard-coded. So we're using the system.getProperty to get our user's home directory. And the home folder in Windows is the user's own folder. So it's going to be local disk, C in this case, users, and then the user name. And in this case, it's just going to be some random letters when I created this Windows install on a different hard drive. And as you can see, the folder Tower Defense Tutorial gets created inside that user's folder. And in there we find the level file. So it's all working as it should. And then to create the runnable jar in Windows, we do the same. Right click, export, select Java, runnable jar file. And for launch configuration, just select the one that matches the correct project and also the main class. And nothing is different here. Select export destination. I'm selecting the desktop here as well, saving it making sure that the extract required libraries into the generator jar finishing. We got some warnings here as well, but that's all right. Clicking OK and minimizing Eclipse. And now we have the file and I'm just going to right click it, properties, making sure it's all right. Executable jar file and also opens with the Java platform. Just making sure that's all good. And then we can open it like we should, and we should be able to play our game. Perfect. Alrighty, this is where the episode ends, and hopefully you can now export your game and play it elsewhere. Maybe even send it to one of your friends or family members to show what you have made. There's of course still a chance that you can't play the game outside Eclipse, and since it works in Eclipse, it can be very difficult to find a reason why it won't work. It does not have to be a problem with your game. It could be a faulty install of Java, something wrong in the operating system or something else. But if you still have issues after this video, I would start trying to updating Java, checking the latest version. Then I would take a look at all the ways you access a file or place on the computer. Try just making a game or program without any resources. Create a window and see if that works outside Eclipse. Step by step you will be able to pinpoint where the problem or problems are. You can also leave a comment on this video and I will try to help you as best as I can. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, please like the video and subscribe. I got an upcoming video about some channel updates coming soon, so you don't want to miss that. Alrighty, until the next video drops, take care now and hopefully I get to see you again. Cheers!